And we're going to play, play the Star Spangled Banner. doesn't attend any church services. He did not participate in the National Day of Prayer and recently said we are not a Christian nation. Well, I got news for you, Mr. President. We are a Christian nation and we will remain to be a Christian nation. Whenever people in the Christian faith speak out about freedom in our political system, folks get upset and they say, keep your religion in your church. And politics and religion don't mix. Well, I say, put a lid on it. Right now, there is a one-party system rule in Washington, and that has to change. Even if you're not current or former military, you too can be an Oath Keeper and help us spread the message. As a member of the Oath Keepers, I pledge to be faithful to my oath. We also pledge not to do any of the following ten things that's listed on the Oath Keeper website, which is OathKeepers.org. These are the orders that we refuse to obey. We will not obey orders to disarm the American people. We will not obey orders to conduct warrantless searches of the American people. We will not obey orders to detain American citizens as unlawful enemy combatants or subject them to military tribunal. We will not obey orders to impose martial law or a state of emergency on any state. We will not obey orders to invade or subjugate any state that asserts its sovereignty. We will not obey any order to blockade American cities, thus turning them into giant concentration camps. We will not obey any order to force American citizens into any form of detention camp under any pretext. We will not obey orders to assist or support the use of any foreign troops on U.S. soil against the American people to keep the peace or maintain control. We will not obey any orders to confiscate the property of the American people, including food or other essential supplies. We will not obey any orders which infringe on the right of the people to free speech, to peaceably assemble, or to petition their government for a redress of grievances. These are our ten orders that we refuse to follow. You can read a full explanation of each order at OathKeepers.org. Although these orders don't cover every possible scenario, they do lay a guideline for us to follow uh, against unconstitutional laws. I want to take a minute and speak to you about things that are going on around uh, all of us right now that you may not be aware of because they're not receiving a lot of coverage, all right? One of these things is the violation of the Posse Comitatus Act. The events surrounding the Hurricane Karina aftermath are a perfect example of an out-of-control government. For months, U.S. military troops, as well as armed government contractors, patrolled the streets of New Orleans and surrounded areas. This is a direct violation of the law. They also took part in mass gun confiscations including door-to-door -door searches for weapons in parts of the cities that wasn't even flooded. A natural disaster is not a legal reason to deny citizens their Second Amendment right. Nobody has a problem with the military <clears throat> rescuing people off the rooftops, but it's another thing entirely for them to be running armed patrols around the city. 
This is a job for the local and state police. Another disturbing trend is the ongoing urban warfare drills going on around in the country, where U.S. troops and sometimes even foreign troops actually occupy small U.S. cities for several days for training. We're told by the press that these drills are to prepare for the troops for jobs that they'll be doing overseas. But I personally take issue with these reasoning, with that reasoning, because the streets of Fallujah have nothing in common with Main Street, USA. The military already has mock cities and towns to train in set up all over the United States. The only logical reason for them to train going door to door in America, practicing disarming people, is to actually do that one day here in America. First, before we can really understand the Constitution, we need to understand the bedrock upon which it was laid. And that is biblical law. All of the law that we have today comes from biblical law, no matter where you look at it. Okay? For instance, we have covenants not to compete in business. Right, Floyd? Floyd? And what that is is a negative contractual covenant, just like the Ten Commandments. It's a covenant between God and His people. Thou shalt not do certain things. We have that in business today. That is the basis of our civil law. The Constitution is no different, except for the Constitution in the United States was the first time ever in 4,000 years of recorded history that a nation actually decided to base its law and its government on biblical principles. And that's why we have been so successful. The reason that we're not so successful is we drifted away from that. And I'm going to explain that to you here about the Constitution. The Constitution has seven articles, okay? The first article establishes Congress, gives us a bicameral legislation. So we have the House in which we elect popularly by population, and the Senate, two, state, two senators from every state. Everybody knows this. Then Article 2 establishes the office of president and tells him what his limitations are, okay? We have to remember that the president does not have any power that was not granted to him in the Constitution. Okay? The problem that we have with this president is he was never qualified constitutionally to take the office. Okay? He wasn't born in the United States. If he was, he would have showed us. Now, at this point, I'm not speaking for NC Freedom, but personally, I'm not going to waste any more effort trying to change federal government. Federal government, to me, is lost. When we have our congressman signing the largest spending bill in the history of mankind and did not read it, and the people didn't want it, we have no representation. And they did it to us again, just last week with cap and trade. I'm hoping the Senate holds up, but let's look at another point. We have Al Franken in our Senate. What is wrong with these people? became the managing director, and for the next four years, I was out organizing sidewalk protests, marches, and lobbying efforts. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I learned during that time. Our elected officials are not listening to us. How does that make you feel? They are not listening to us. I mean, you know, that, that's not passionate enough for me. You don't understand. I'm out in the streets marching. I want to hear some frustration. Are you happy with what's going on? So I came here today to offer you some solutions. Now you're probably wondering, well, what does illegal immigration have to do with our, with our taxes? Uh, <laughs> well, let me tell you. Los Angeles County Supervisor Michael Antonovich released a report last year that we, the Los Angeles County taxpayers, are shelling out over one billion dollars per year. And you guys, that's not even their education or the incarceration, that's just public benefits. Fair just released another report that in the state of California, we, the taxpayers, are paying an additional $10.5 billion annually on public benefits for criminal aliens. No. Do you want to continue paying that? No. No. Hi, you know, heck 
snow. I'm not a crook. 